Hey YouTube, what's going on? Welcome to another video. All uh, right, one of the biggest things I've had asked of me is like my hitting tips, my pitching tips, like how do you do this, how do you do that? I already have a hitting tips video out on my channel. A lot of people have pitching videos that are way better than mine, so I would recommend to go watch theirs, but what I would recommend you do for this video is watch because I'm going to break down how I play in ranked seasons. I'm going to break down like how I approach at bats because a lot of people talk about like, hey, I chase curveballs all the time. Hey, I chase fastballs all the time. Like, can you help me out with that? This video is going to do my best to be showing you how... Um, I essentially like to pitch and how I uh, like to bat and it's gonna be on the highest difficulty in the game It's gonna be on legend difficulty and you're looking at my team my current god squad that we have Shohei and left Buxton and center trout and right. Uh, I would recommend right away uh, Put trout in left or right field if he's parallel four because he'll have that gold shield Before parallel four. He doesn't have a gold shield in his defense. So I would definitely keep uh, Trout in center field until you have him at parallel four. Um, otherwise, Vladdy, I'm trying out Seager a little bit, but this is the team. We're pitching on Legends, so that means we have to pitch with the best pitcher on Legend difficulty right now, which is Fernando Valenzuela. We're going to try our best with them. I hope that we learn a lot. I hope we have some fun. This will mostly be an unedited video, just giving you a pretty good idea of how I like to play the game. I hope you enjoy, like the video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Hey YouTube, post-production Thuni here. Um, I noticed in the video you're about to watch that I didn't tell you what my PCI settings were. So I wanna go to uh, my settings and I wanna go to gameplay. I'm gonna go to batting here. So the, the PCI OC in game is, it's called, um, it's called reverb. So this is not my PCI um, in the comment section or in the description it will be a link to Ochev's YouTube video and his Twitter. I think I'll put all that in there. But Ochev is the guy that I stole this PCI from. But I think this PCI has helped me so much playing on Legend. I think it's literally the PCI that's been saving me in Hall of Fame and Legend games. It feels like I can see the ball better. So I'm giving you what that is right here. So it's a PCI center is altitude. PCI inner is on none. PCI outer is on reverb. PCI color is cyan. PCI transparency is 80% and I have no fade out on there. Now go enjoy the video. So on Legend difficulty, Valenzuela is, are you from Minnesota? Yes, I am. So on Legend difficulty, uh, Valenzuela is an absolute stud because of the fact that he can throw uh, off speed and off speed is way better than it was last year, mostly because of pinpoint pitching. I just threw a fastball in the middle, even though I had good release, that was kind of weird. But my recommendation early on, every time you play um, ranked seasons is you got to get a pretty good vibe of your opponent. So I didn't do a good job of it right there on that first fastball, but you want to get a good vibe right away and see if they're chasing pitches. So I'm going to throw a curveball in the dirt here. I'm not in the dirt. I'll talk about the difference between in the dirt and like just a little bit above the dirt. So you're, you're either pitching for a strikeout or you're pitching for poor contact. That's basically the two things you're looking at when you're playing ranks. So I'm going to pitch for a swing here. I'm going to put this a little bit above the dirt and have a good release on this curveball. And he chased. So now I kind of have a little bit of intel. Like this guy might be nervous about Valenzuela. Um, he's chasing pitches low out of the zone. See what he does here in the circle. So that was a really good circle change. Uh, perfect, obviously, a little bit early on the release. So he's still gung-ho looking for that fastball. So we're going to change his eye level here and go screwball the top shelf of the zone. And he was way late on it, right? So he's early on the curveballs. He's looking for the heat. And then he saw a pitch at his eyes. And he was like, here comes my fastball. And then it broke. And he was like, wait a minute. What was that? So that's all like kind of about tunneling, right? So you want to get a vibe early on with your opponent. Like, where are they chasing pitches? Are they early? Are they late? The intel I've gained so far this inning is that he's a little bit of a free swinger. And he's looking dead on that heat. So until he shows me that he can hit the off speed on Valenzuela on legend, by the way, this is not as easy to kind of talk about on Hall of Fame or All-Star because obviously on Hall of Fame and All-Star, the pitch speeds are slower. And uh, I got rudely interrupted by a sub up, uh, sub alert there. Kilo, it's your one. Thank you, man. I'm joking about rudely, uh, rudely interrupted. But Kilo, tip your cap in the chat. YouTube, I'll talk to you when we get back to the next inning here. Kilo, appreciate that tier one so much, man. Thank you. Everybody tip your cap in the chat. Thank you. Thank you for your first time at tier one, man. I appreciate that a lot. 
so now we get into batting and i've been playing br all day so my timing is going to be off like crazy i'm gonna have no idea what i'm doing so i will be taking a lot of pitches early on to get a pretty good vibe on reading pitches so i'm not taking a take i'm also moving my pci pretending like i'm swinging to try to get a pretty good vibe on like release point and stuff and good thing we've been taking right it's already three and oh good three one sinker here i'm taking here unless it's a pitch up and inside and it was up and inside but it was a ball so it's ball four so one of the things that i've heard a lot of people complain about on hall of fame and legend is that it feels like the pitch speeds are unbelievably fast this year so the whole reason how i approach certain at bats is i try my best to like it was a really good pitch i was mid talking so i definitely should have swung at that instead but that was a really good pitch and i'm gonna get rewarded no i'm not good i was gonna say i hope i didn't get rewarded there now we have a fun one two count so that's a tough pitch right on on hall of fame that might have been a double the right center field but on on a legend that pci is so small that it's just a weak single in the right and now he's probably gonna throw i think he's gonna probably get another fastball across here yeah i just missed it so i'm gonna assume that he's gonna throw some of the dirt here um otherwise i'm reacting to a fastball there's some away he hasn't really thrown a lot of pitch in the dirt yet it's hard to get talking in like the game's moving by so fast here come on bucky there's a really good pitch that was a really good pitch so what i've been talking about with hall of fame and legend is some of these pitch uh, pitches that are low out of the zone might be really good hits on hall of fame but on legend that pci is so small it's hard to really get rewarded for those swings and these curveballs early in the count you need to leave them alone it's hard to leave them alone with two strikes you need to do your best job of like trying to time it i'm having a hard time talking while i'm batting here because he's pitching so fast which is good i'm happy the game's moving by fast but see that was just a uh, mistaken location there i've been taking a lot of pitches and one of the things that i love with lefties of the plate is off speed that's away where i can kind of extend my arms like vladimir guerrero and crush it and now speaking of vlad now his son vladimir guerrero jr is up to bat here good pitch man so i think he's gonna try to make me chase here otherwise he's gonna go hide inside so there's the chase so i'm a, i'm expecting the hide inside is coming here on one two see if i can crush it for a two-run shot I crushed it i got the single out of it see pci was good and everything and i was in swing mode there right that was a ball but i swung anyway because i knew that i was gonna have good pci on it so that's the whole thing when we talk about like key holding on certain pitches that's kind of what you have to do you kind of have to sit on your pitch right that was a good cutter he's throwing good cutters to show hey here see if i can battle with two that was not a good cutter That was not a good cutter either. That's gonna go foul though. Just late. Bad side of good there, chat. Shoot, that was a good swing by Shohei. And that was a really good pitch too. He's doing a good job of pitching here. Underneath it. Good battle with Shohei so far. So he's been throwing a lot of cutters inside. I would imagine he's still staying inside here. Good curveball, man. He's dotting me really, really well. So I think inside's not working. He's going to go up here. Okay, he went inside again. I would have gone up if I was him. I've been showing him that I've been a tough out on inside pitches, and he still stayed inside. Now we got to take advantage of Salvi here. And I take a sinker right down the middle. I dropped my PCI there. Man. Didn't go. Can't throw this at bat with Salvi away. See, on, on, on Hall of Fame, this is what we've been talking about, right? On Hall of Fame and on uh, All-Star, that's a grand slam. But Legend is very unforgiving. You have to be right on that ball. We unfortunately missed a grand slam by about that much, but we got one run, three hits. We got his pitch count to go up near 30, and that was a good first half inning. And... I think what I'm going to do now is talk more about hitting because I talked about pitching a lot last inning and we don't have a lot of time to talk hitting because the game moves by so fast. But basically what I was talking about with hitting 
is early on the game you should be taking as many pitches as you can to get a good vibe on like understanding how fast or how slow pitches are coming in and you're getting a vibe on how your opponent likes to play and now talking about a vibe this guy's taking off speed away now so i'm going to come at him inside with a fastball and see how awake his bat is here and he was certainly awake that was a little bit over the plate, a uh, little bit more over the plate than I wanted to. If you notice, I wanted that ball right on the black, and that kind of floated right down the middle there. That's about the most BP of a fastball you can get. A uh, good swing by the opponent. So this is a, a thing that you really want to notice is I'll talk about pitching now. You really want to make sure that you are, um, like, finishing your pinpoint the whole way. I pulled off my pinpoint a little bit too fast there, and it cost me. That was a much better pinpoint pitch. One of the things I've noticed with Pinpoint this year is that if you pull off early, that pitch is not going where you want it to go. I was a little bit late, and it still went, like, pretty close to where I was at, right? So more than anything, do not be early on Pinpoint. Let that circle fill all the way up. That's a much better pitch there. That's the perfect spot that I wanted. And now I'm going to change the eye level again, and I'm going to go to that high screwball that we threw for a strikeout earlier this game. Drop it in there, and he's completely tied up. So I can't keep throwing that pitch but it's working for right now and because i doubt he expects it again for the first pitch strike i'm gonna throw it again here would have liked that to be located but i talked about this on my stream earlier today but one of the things that is so important on pitching i would argue the most important thing that's exactly what i wanted my fastball versus miguel cabrera and he did what i thought he was going to do which is followed off but one of the most important things on pitching is you when you go into a game you need to have a game plan on how you plan on pitching and then you need to react based on what your opponent is doing so my opponent was chasing early and now he's not chasing as much even though he chased a curveball there and we have two away but you have to have your game plan and then you have to react to what your opponent is doing so now with two away as I, as we always talk about knowing what your opponent is doing and, and reacting to stuff nico goodrum has 117 contact versus lefties so this is going to be his best bat that I've faced so far. I feel like he's going to have a really good swing with Frico. I call him Frico because I love him. He's batting 355 with him as well. I want to give him pitches that I know he can't hit because I know that he wants to hit with a car that's got very good contact. So I've thrown two absolute dots. We're ahead 0-1-2. We throw a curveball to Chase, and he has a good eye there. Now, is he expecting the screwball uh, upstairs? I think he is. I'm going to throw a screwball low here instead and see if he chases. So that was a little bit lower than I wanted it to be there. I'm going to go back to the circle change away because he has not shown that he can hit the circle change yet off of uh, Valenzuela. That was a really good... He might be in take mode here. I'm not sure. I don't know what I want to do. I think I'm going to go back to the screwball upstairs, see if I can get him on the uh, pitch here. Yeah, that's another good one. So it's working right now is the tunnel of going with like high fastballs into high curveballs i guarantee he will crush that pitch in about like two or three innings but for right now it's working so i'm going to keep going back to it and now we go back to hitting here 35 pitches out of bernsey in the first inning by the way so what i would guess he's going to do i didn't mean to swing i i forgot check swings were op this year i meant to check swing there and a good curveball tough to talk while you swing i'm gonna try my best to hit and talk after but what i meant to say was um after a long inning in the first i think he's coming right at me here that's what i'm gonna assume so we'll see how he pitches here hi chat how are you doing thanks for dealing uh bearing with me here everybody i'll swill almost my yard oh man that would have been nuts good pitch it's valenzuela so all right, we got two away. Top of the order back up. Trout walked his first at bat. I want to be as pesky as I can be here. Obviously, I have the best hitter in the game at the plate, but I want to be pesky because my first two batters have gone down really quick. I want to see if I can not only get a two out rally, but I can also get his pitch count up a little bit more. We got him one, two. And there's a pesky hit right to the shortstop, but I probably should just went with the cutter earlier in the count, but. Whenever I have two outs and nobody on base, I try my best, especially on Legend, to work that pitch count up a little bit more. I might have looked at a really good cutter earlier there, but overall, I felt like that was a pretty decent at-bat with Trout, and now we go back to work pitching. So I love that song, Medic. It's so good. All right, so um, we'll talk uh, philosophy on facing pitchers now. 
So what you should do versus pitchers is throw your pitches that you don't have confidence in yet. So if you look, I have two seam or four seam and circle change or screwball, I guess. Four seam and screwball are my two pitches with the lowest confidence. More times than not, you should get pitchers out. So I'm going to increase my confidence in these pitches here. I'll throw another screwball to Burnsy. I can't believe that wasn't a strike. I'll go back to the four seam away here. And he's going to keep fighting. Smog, what's up, man? How you doing? Smog, welcome to the stream. Can one of my mods shout out uh, Smog in the chat, please? Appreciate it. Thank you. So there's a good use of the circle change. I know it's Burnsy. I know it's a starting pitcher. It's not great. It's not a cool thing to like strike out a starting pitcher because like you kind of expect to. But we gained some confidence in a pitch that we were not super confident with with Valence with a prior. And now versus Buxton, I'm going to work inside here. He saw the fastball inside. He hit it pretty well. But now this guy's doing a good job of taking pitches. So I kind of have to change how I'm pitching here. So I've been throwing the screwball high. And you see how he's too late there. He's been seeing me throw the screwball high and away. So he's programmed to hit that ball. Now we're mixing in fastballs. Now they're coming in hot. And now I'm going to see if I can throw a screwball low and away here to change the eye level once again. On one and two. Good pitch. Good take. Just missed. Or three and two. Good pitch. I'm going to go to our patented screwball up and away and see if he's still not ready on that pitch yet. And he still isn't. So um, that pitch is working right now. I think I got greedy on that one. I honestly thought it was going to hit that for a double in the right field. We luckily got another strikeout because of our tunneling. We went high fastballs early in the count. He was like, wow, I can't hit that high fastball anymore. Here comes the screwball. Completely changed the eye level and we're chilling. So now let's try to show you getting some uh, hits here. That was right down the middle. Just missed it. Just missed it, man. That was a really good cutter. I love cutters versus lefties. I should have crushed that. Oh, that was right down the middle, too. Good slide step sinker. He hasn't done a slide step on me yet. I thought I was going to break inside for sure. Man, I thought I had that. That stinks. I'm going to talk here in a sec. Come on, Bucky. Boy, good pitch again. He's thrown two great sinkers this at bat. One of the things I'm trying to do now is he knows that I've been a little bit more patient. I'm trying to take advantage of pitches middle, middle, early in the count. And we got a pretty good pitch there. I just missed it. I can tell those to be a strike because it it started middle, obviously. See if McMahon can run into something. I'm with McMahon, I'm looking for something um up and away. And we got up and away, but it was a ball. I don't know why with McMahon I love that pitch, but I love opening up with lefties versus righties. I love stuff that I uh, can extend my hands on. And we definitely see that's one of the weird things, right? Barrel that ball up and it felt like there was no exit velo on that. Sometimes you get the love and sometimes you don't. But overall, I feel like we're putting good swings to the ball. We're definitely pitching pretty well with Valenzuela. As we head in the fourth inning, we have 39 pitches so far. And now this is a little bit scary here. So I know Ernie Banks is an absolute bona fide stud versus left-handed pitching. So I want to try to sneak in a strike two pitch here. That was a horrible pitch. I don't know what happened on my uh, joystick there. Try to take advantage of Ernie Banks' uh, aggressiveness here. Finally swung at a curveball. He's been really good at uh, leaving that pitch alone all game. And now on 0-2, getting him out in his front foot with a circle. Perfect release, and it still didn't go where you wanted to. That's tough, but we'll be okay. Now it's the same situation like Miguel Cabrera. Exactly where I wanted it. So we go back to the Miguel Cabrera home run. I wanted a fastball on the black or a little bit more inside. It unfortunately did not go where I wanted it to, and I am now starting to pitch really bad with Valenzuela. But versus lefties with Valenzuela, I want to treat that curveball like a slider pretty much. So you know lefty, lefty, you throw a slider low and away like right here. I'm trying to throw my curveball right there. Not the best accuracy on that slide step, but a pretty decent release on the curveball. 
And now I'm going to get him tied up again with our famous screwball. This one's going to be inside, and he will have an ugly swing at that, and we have two away. So you're like, hey, streamer, you just talked about earlier about how you don't want to go to a pitch too much. Like, why do you keep going to the screwball upstairs with Valenzuela? Well, as Brennan Huff subs with Prime, thank you so much, by the way. Everybody tip your cap in the chat to Brennan. Thank you. One of the reasons I keep going back to that screwball is that I'm noticing his bat speed is not up to par on that pitch at all. So we are definitely going to keep attacking that zone as much as we can until he proves that he can't hit it. His only run of this game came off an absolute mistake on a fastball, and Valenzuela threw four. It's looking like every single reason why you should pitch with Valenzuela if you are playing on Hall of Fame or Legend. If you're an all-star player, like, I'm not trying to shame you if you're an all-star player. I'm just I'm being real. If you play all-star difficulty, I don't think Valenzuela is the move. I think guys with high velo are the move on all-star. On Legend and Hall of Fame, you need guys who's got, uh, who have a good off-speed. And Valenzuela definitely has that. That was absolutely hung. So you see how we weren't necessarily on that ball. Like my PCI was off a little bit. I was underneath it. It was a hanging curveball, and my favorite first baseman of the game goes yard, and my bomb siren is off. So sorry for that. I love Vladimir Guerrero in this game, man. He feels uh feels really good. He's got righty splits, uh, reverse splits is what I meant to say. He's got reverse splits, which make him a very fun card he can crush righties and i mean lefty righty you should be able to hit pretty well man threw in that bat with otani there hey xander what's up man see if i can get some with shohei here good pitch i don't know why that froze me i get into ruts sometimes where i'm looking for certain pitches and that would be another good piece of advice as we talk about playing on ranked here i just missed another one there when you're playing ranked, there's basically two ways to go. You can guess pitches or you can play react ball. What I mean by react ball is like just sit back and try your best to flick up to wherever the ball is going. With reacting though, you have to have a pretty good idea of how he's pitching. And right now, I know that he's going inside a lot to lefties. He's trying to go away here. I think he's throwing a curveball here on 2-0. So I'm gonna guess curveball. I got a change up that was absolutely located. That was fantastic. There's that curveball. I think he's going cutter inside here. You know, um, it may not be fun, but sometimes you just have to tip your cap to the opponent for some unbelievable pitching. All three of his strikeouts were right on the black. One of the reasons why I love and hate pinpoint this year is how good some people can pitch with it. He clearly had a very good inning there pitching. And now we're going to keep going back to work with uh, Fernando on the mound here. Because the Twins ain't hitting them. Yeah, the Twins are definitely not hitting Bombas this year. A little bit early on that fastball. So we have Intel. He's very early on the fastball, which means I don't think he knows what's coming. I think he's definitely on his front foot right now. So I got to come right at Soto. It's a scary thing to say going right at one of the best hitting cards in the game. But I am going to go right after Soto. I had a perfect release and it missed. I'm going to go back to a curveball, but try and locate it here. That's exactly what I wanted. And now instead of going to the screwball, I'm going to go heat here. See if I can make him pull it for an out to the right side. And we got him to do what I wanted him to do. So he did a little bit better than what I thought. But early in the count, I noticed that he was very early on a fastball. So I assume that he was kind of on his front foot and we get exactly what I wanted right there. When you throw a fastball away, what you're hoping for is for them to be on their front foot and for them to take it over the right side of the field for a ground out, exactly what we wanted there. And now I threw a floater of a change up and he took it. So I wonder if he's looking for a walk now because he just watched a cake pitch go right over the middle. Now let's test that eye level again. I haven't thrown this pitch in a while. See if I can get that screwball up and away. And he took it, so I thought he maybe would jump at that pitch. But now I can't throw it again the rest of the at-backs. He's seen it. He knows it's there. I'm going to try to throw a fastball in the hands, and we locate it perfectly, and he had a good swing, staying alive. Very good swing. His PCI was on it and everything. I'm going to go circle inside here. 
I'm going to circle away a lot, see if he changes on the inside pitch. Good pitch. Good swing. He's having a really good AB with Vladdy here, man. He was very early, but now I'm going to go back to that screwball upstairs because he's probably forgot about it. Absolute dot. Yeah. So the reason why I said early in the at-bat that I didn't... Oh, man. Man, dude. Beer gun, I appreciate you so much. I thank you so much for the 10 gifted, dude. Everybody tip your cap in the chat to Beer Gut gifting 10 subs. That'll definitely be on the YouTube video. That'll definitely be on the YouTube video. Is that going with Piazza? There's no way, right? Oh, I can't lock onto this. Okay. All right, so I thought that I was going to have a play on that ball in the outfield. It wouldn't let me vault the wall, and now we're down 2-2, or tied 2-2, on a just late double. Not what you love to see there. But nonetheless, we are pitching pretty well with Valenzuela. He is on his front foot with Bernsey, so I'm going to keep going after him here. I thought I should have got the check swing there, but uh, Beer Gut with 10 gifted subs again, man. Thank you so much, dude. Vladdy has the play. I'm going to thank Beer Gut. I'll see you in a bit, YouTube. Never mind. We're doing fine. Beer Gut gifting the pressure who's in here. Uh, sticks, uh, skiing, slim, trucking, cheater, mouthy. Coop, uh, who and Duncan Beer Gut up to 119 gifted subs this month and all time. Thank you so much, Beer Gut. I appreciate that 10 gifted so much. So I could go to the bench here in the bottom of the fifth inning, but I am pitching well with Valenzuela. Um, I'm going to like to keep him in a little bit longer because I like how I've been pitching with him. Although I wouldn't fault you at all for going to a bench bat because this is a tie game and I might want some momentum. Good change up there. Usually versus pitchers, you throw fastball or off speed. Fastball in the middle, I missed it, so I'm going to guess that the curveball's coming here. And I got a fastball. I guess wrong. So I'm going to go away from guessing now. I'm going to go more into like playing react ball here because I need to put some runs on the board. And we absolutely scorched that, but unfortunately it goes foul. I don't know why a lot of early contact is going foul this year, but it does. Thankfully, that won't go foul, though. Mike Trout, so you notice that I was a little bit underneath it. Some cards are just better than other cards, right? Mike Trout is one of those cards. He's the best hitting card in the game. If you have Diamond Dynasty team and you don't have Mike Trout, I could not recommend enough selling every card you can to get Mike Trump because he's unbelievable. Beer Gut, again, thank you so much for the 10 gifted. Let's get some more runs for you. So I got my pitch with uh, Seeger there. I just followed off a little bit. So versus lefties, what he's been doing with Burns, he's been throwing a lot of cutters inside. So my first thing I'm thinking of is watching cutters inside. And I pulled that a little bit, but I get a single on. It's kind of weird. So that was a bad swing by me. So I, what I meant to say was I was reacting to cutters inside primarily and then off speed away. I got my off speed away, but it wasn't a very good swing. And I want to try to take advantage of something here with Buxton, especially with speed on base. He's been pitching Buxton a lot away and he wants to double play right now. And he'll get his double plays. I just missed a sinker inside. So what I was trying to say was um, when you have a runner on first, I would definitely lay off of pitches low until you have two strikes because obviously you don't want to hit in that double play. And that was the pitch I wanted. It was a sinker. It was a middle in. It was uh, definitely a pitch I got to turn on for a home run. We unfortunately were just a little bit late on it. And he'll hit that foul. Enjoy that. No luck. Yeah. So there's another one for the opponent, uh, a, uh, a early foul ball with uh, Buxton there. Not what you love to see for him, but what you love to see for us is exactly what I wanted on this pitch. Let's break this down. You might be like, wow, I wish that he would have got a home run there. You see what happened on that pitch? That curveball is out of the strike zone and he barreled it up and it wasn't a home run. You might be thinking he should have gotten a home run there, and you could probably argue that he should have, but the reason why he didn't is because that pitch was out of the strike zone. The exit velo, when it's lower in the zone, is a lot lower than it is up in the zone. I've seen a lot of perfect, perfect home runs on fastballs up and out of the strike zone, but not 
anything on perfect purpose that are low on the strike zone. Jammed him with a fastball there. So that curveball going back to the lineup with Buxton, exactly what I wanted, right? I wanted him to chase it low. Even if he barreled it up, I know it's not going to be a home run. He could have easily gotten a double on that, but that was exactly what we wanted out of that outcome there. He was underneath the fastball, so this tells me that he's trying to hit curveballs right now because he's underneath it, so we're going to throw a couple more fastballs. And he pulls a fastball to right field. Now we have even more intel. Very early on the fastball. So we have him guessing again. Keep in mind, last at bat with Yelich, I struck him out on a sweeping curve, or sweeping curve, excuse me, a screwball inside. So I'm going to hit him with a screwball with one strike here and guarantee myself strike two. So that wasn't a good screwball, but he hasn't seen it in a while. So we got him to chase. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw a circle and try to get strike three here, see if I can get him chasing out of the zone. And I can. So good sequencing so far from Valenzuela. So far, um, the two runs that we've allowed are a fastball that was over the heart of the plate that I did not mean to throw and a weird, goofy, just late RBI double. I think we're doing a great job with Valenzuela. We have the heart of the order coming up here. Got to put some runs up for him. Beer gut, I would love that. And Beer gut again, thank you so much for your 10 gifted, dude. So he goes to Mo out of the bullpen. We've had enough of the Corbin Burns show. And now we enter Morion Rivera, who does have a changeup, but you're basically just sitting heat here. Good slider. Did I really not foul that off even? Oh, I was underneath it. Okay. So weird first out there, but now a 1-0 count here to Vlad. And he hits Vlad in the shoulder. I don't blame him. Vlad's two for two. So let's see if we can get things uh, blown open here with Shohei. See if we get a first pitch cutter that we can drive. Good first pitch sinker. I want to try to keep things up here. I'm not going to chase anything low. Good cutter. So now we're in a tough spot. 0-2 with Shohei. Got to avoid the double play here. If he hangs a slider low, I'm going to crush it, though. And he threw that slider. We got exactly what we wanted there. So I knew that he was thinking about the slider because that's what he's shown earlier in the game. We fortunately got a good piece of it with Shohei, and now with Salvi, a chance to blow the doors off here. And we will hit that just foul because I just missed it. Got to try to get some runs. We've hit into way too many double plays this game. Really good pitch. See if he goes uh, low and away here. He went up and away. I did not expect him to go up there. All right. That was the pitch I thought he was going to throw. There we go, Salvi. So I was a little bit early on that. I think I got gifted a little bit on that swing. I did not think that I was going to get a ball over the shortstop's head, but good exit velo on Salvi. We have Ducks in the Pond. We have Nico Goodrum. And now... So let me talk about this really quick because I fouled it off and missed it. Runners at second and third and one out. The base is open at first base. If you've been patient all game, this is when you go. This is when you go, right? You need to at least bring in a run here. So I'm in full-blown swing mode with Nico Goodrum. I swung at that fastball and missed. I will swing at anything in the strike zone here. So that's the sack fly. That gets the job done. It's not pretty. But it does get the job done. Bucks is setting up for the tag. Will not have enough to get him. I accidentally set the runner at third base. But the run scored. Why did he go? I. This game is weird sometimes. But the sack fly went in. We get our two runs. Thankfully, we got the run. And uh, I have no idea why my runner at third went there. That was weird. But going back to what I was saying. So, obviously, you want to be the hero and, hit the, hit, and always hit the three-run homer, obviously. But you can't always do that. And especially on Legend, you have to play small ball. And I know with runners at second and third, I can get a really good run with a sack fly, especially in a pitch up in the zone. So, I got one with Frico there. And now, Valenzuela continuing to get back to work. And we really got him guessing up here. So, uh, change up, blown away with Miguel Cabrera. He was early and pulled it for an out. Juan Soto, fastball, early and pulled it for an out. His timing is clearly all over the place right now. We basically have him in the palm of our hands. We can kind of ride the rest of this wave the rest of the way with Fernando Valenzuela. See what his swing there was on the fastball. 
So I'm going to start uh, changing up my telegraph here. So I've been throwing that screwball for strike three. I will throw it for strike two here and get strike two because he doesn't expect it on strike two. See how he's too late and his piece out is all over the place. I'm going to try to go at his eyes here in a fastball upstairs. And we got him. So that's a huge pitching advice for me. One of my favorite things to do is have my game plan early in the game. And then late game, my strike three pitches become my strike two pitches. Because he knows right now that screwball strike three. He knows if he's got a two strike count, I'm throwing a screwball and I'm dancing with him and I'm having fun. But now if I throw it for strike two, he's not expecting it. Now I get him that two strike count. So it's about balancing later in the game. And with that, I'm also gonna give balance with the hook. He's pitched well. I wanna get some more runs and put this game away. So we're gonna go to uh, Bryce Harper off the bench here. Your attention, please. And we're gonna tip our cap to a fantastic performance by Fernando Valenzuela. Seven innings, two runs, three hits, a very good performance. And because I was pitching with a curveball guy, I am going to go with some velo here and I'm gonna get Chapman and Dibble warmed up in the pen. Uh, I would sell him, Seaver, Burnett, DeGrum. I'd go, what am I doing? I would go uh, DeGrum, Burnett, Seaver. Good swing by Harper, just missed it. So, uh, played a little bit of react ball, got a little greedy with Harper. That's not the end of the world there. And now Trout, one for two with a solo bomb. See if we can add on yet another. And we are just underneath the hanging slider. Can't be underneath those. Those are cookies, man. You got to take advantage of those. And we get another one. I don't know why I took that pitch. Staying alive with the foul ball there. That was not a very good swing. Let's see if we can get some better swings on. So he's gone slider, slider, cutter, nothing inside yet. And we absolutely smoke it to right field, but we were just a little bit early. Very good swing there. So this harkens back to my hitting tips video. If you haven't watched that, please go watch that video. I know based on where I sit my PCI, how to flick up to a cutter up and away. So that's basically uh, what happened right there. Now we didn't get rewarded for it, but that's like my whole philosophy on hitting is that my pci same spot every pitch i know how to react to pitches that break in certain zones because of where i sit with my pci good swing by seager there let's see if we get a little two-run shot with buck and blow this game open i'm sitting on that slider that he threw to trout i would love a slider to buxton here we got the slider it's in the pci it's late side of good it's not gonna go would have liked to see that be a home run with uh, Buxton. I got exactly the pitch I wanted, exactly the outcome I wanted, but unfortunately we don't get the home run. We still are up three. And we are gonna go based on the splits. I'm gonna go to a righty since he's been seeing a lefty all game. Top five, any must-haves, Glavin, Hampton, DeGrom, Burns, uh, Hershiser. I would get uh, Hershiser out of there. I don't think he's as good as he was last year. So now the philosophy changed a little bit. We've gone from a big, uh, crafty, wonderful curveball machine in Fernando Valenzuela to the hard-throwing Rob Dibble. And now I'm going to go fastball, fastball right away because he showed that he wasn't on it. He, he certainly reacted to the fastball there. So this is another thing that we kind of have to react to now. He might be a fastball hitter. That might be why he was so bad versus Valenzuela. That was a really good swing. So let's start mixing in some more off-speed here. And now we got him on that front foot. I'm going to go fastball inside to change up what we were just doing. Now I'm going to go off speed away again. I'm going to go cutter up and away here. See if I can get him to chase. Way too early. So I had a good job of recognizing that he was a fastball hitter. I mixed in the off speed a little bit more. And now Shohei off the bench. This is a big chance for him to get back in the game. I'm going to do my best to not give Shohei a good pitch. And we're going to do what's called uh, working around the batter. So if I walk Shohei, it is not the end of the world, but I don't want to give him a cookie. I want to make him earn anything that he's going to hit here. So 0-2, I'm going to go cutter on the hands. Absolute darling by Dibble, good take. And now I'm going to change the eye level and go cut or slider inside out of the zone. Good pitch, did he go? It looked like he did. Let's take a little bit, a little uh, look at the replay here. Little look at the replay here. I think he went, you be the judge. No, he didn't go. He pulled back. Good job. So on 2-2, uh, I'm going to go cut her away, see if I can get him looking for strike three. 
That was not where I wanted that to go. A little bit too aggressive of Spike. And now on 3-2, I'm going to go cutter away one more time. I'm, I'm going to stay away from the fastball. And we threw a darling of a cutter. That's what I wanted to do on a strike two. So he's clearly looking fastball, and he's clearly looking for a walk if he's not getting one. So now we might have him a little bit more aggressive. So I'm going to throw a cutter low and see if he chases here on 0-1. He took. Okay. So still a, a cautious approach. Sometimes guys get aggressive and they get frustrated. They struck out. So they start swinging there. And now we have a really patient batter. I am not going to give him anything inside. I feel like he's sitting inside with Buxton trying to turn and burn and put the uh, game in reach here. I'm going to go to that cutter away on 3-1. So now, I need to think about what I want to do here. So it's 3-2. I said I wasn't going to go fastball inside, but I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to throw a fastball middle, low inside. I'm going to see, because I've been throwing a lot of pitches up, see if this can get him a little bit out in front. And it definitely changed the eye level a little bit. So I know that the one of the pitches I haven't thrown all game for a strikeout I know with Valenzuela, for example, I have not struck out anyone until Dibble on a fastball low and inside. He knows that my strikeout pitches are screwballs up and away, that they're off speed low, they're off speed low on the corner, but I've never thrown a fastball inside. So that is an advantage right there. So when you're thinking about pitching, you like how I'm talking about hitting and pitching in this game is really analytical. It, it like, you should be having fun playing this game. I'm not saying you have to be this locked in every single time playing ranked, but one of my favorite parts of playing this game is the analytical side and like the chess match kind of side of the game, right? And the chess match that I've been dealing with is learning my opponent and learning how I like to play because I feel like I've gotten better playing this game. I hope you watching have learned a couple things as well. Good fastball there by, uh, by Barnes. He hasn't thrown that for a strikeout pitch either. So back to Vladimir Guerrero. I'm gonna have some fun. I'm green lighting him right away. And I just missed a home run splitter there. Just on top of it. I wanna run into a fastball here. See if I have something I can crush with Vlad. And we got the fastball. Look at that chat. So I've been really analytical and I've been talking about fun, right? I like having fun. I know I'm doing good with Flatty. I know I wanted a fastball to show off how beautiful his no-doubt swing is. We got it right there. 447 off the bat of the fantastic Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Go pick him up if you haven't already. Love his card. Hey, uh, Sticks, appreciate it, man. Thank you. I mean, Glavin's the best starter in the game. And we got a race quit, too. So, YouTube, I hope you learned a lot in this video. Um, I hope that you enjoyed um, a nice little win right there for us. Um, honestly, that was probably one of my best games I've had hitting. I feel like pitching was super fun there, and we won 6-2, uh, to two, and I hope that you won by learning some awesome info in this video. If you have any other videos you would like to see me post, like more pitching, more hitting tips, whatever, um, please comment that in the comment section below. But I hope you enjoyed. If you watched to the very end, uh, comment, comment your favorite uh, soda. Just to throw off the people who have no idea about watching the full video. But if you watch the full video, I appreciate you a lot. Because this is a long one. And I'm going for YouTube partner right now. And I'm continuing the, the minutes as we talk. I'm going to let you go. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.